Morrison government has implemented a sweeping restructure of the family court system, merging the family court with the federal circuit court. In a move, the Attorney General Christian Porter says will lower costs and more quickly resolve disputes. But critics, including the Law Council of Australia, say the move will put vulnerable families at risk. For more on this now, I'm joined from Brisbane by the newly minted Assistant Minister to the Attorney General, Senator Amanda Stoker. Uh, Senator Stoker, Minister, Assistant Minister, I should call you now. Great to have you on the show. Um, this is something, you know, you're an MP, I've worked in an MP's office. I don't think there was a day that went past without someone, and, and it's not just women, it's men, it's, it's grandparents. People interacting with the family court system claimed it was dysfunctional, it, it needed to sort of be rebuilt. You come out of the legal world before you went into politics. Practically speaking, take us through what this merger will mean for families. Hi, Peter. You're quite right. It's the almost universal feedback of people who are having any contact with the political system that the main source of the complaints they get to their officers is problems with um, the human experience of dealing with the family law system. And so it's really important this doesn't languish in the too hard basket. We can't ever really turn a situation where two people who once loved each other and now don't from um, delirious bliss um, and now to something much sadder back to happiness. But what we can do and must do is make sure that people are safe, that they can get to a resolution that allows them to move on with their lives practically and that they can do so in a reasonable time for a reasonable price. It's not good enough to just say it's too hard and these reformers represent the first step, and there are a few needed, uh, the first step towards being able to make the changes necessary to whip it into shape. OK, well, tell me again, like, you know, break it down. What will people see now interacting with the system that they didn't see beforehand? What's the changes mean? they will have a single point of entry into the family law system. Under the old system, you could have gone to the Federal Circuit Court, you could have gone to the Family Court, and even worse, you could find yourself bouncing between those courts um, and fighting about which court you belonged in um, rather than just getting on with things. And, of course, all of that costs time and money. You won't have that anymore. There's a single way to start and, um, and move on with your family law case. That makes it simpler and easier for people to understand. There'll be a single set of rules to operate in the court. And that means, again, um, it's going to be less expensive for people to be able to navigate through the system, make it easy to understand, particularly for people who might have to do it self-represented. It means that we're going to have um, judges hearing appeals who also hear trials. Um, and that's good because it means they have relevant experience of how things work. It keeps them connected to the kinds of cases that are coming through the court. And importantly, it means that resources are going to be used more efficiently. That, again, means cheaper resolution of disputes for people who are using the system. It means better bang for the buck for the taxpayer. And it means people can move on with their lives faster. And all of that matters to people's quality of lives. One of the biggest complaints, well, yes, they're expensive, but by God, all lawyers are expensive. One of the biggest complaints tended to, in my view, be that it just takes so long. You know, once people have made the decision to, to, mm. to split, uh, particularly if there are children involved and there's property to be, to be distributed, once they get past that initial decision that that's where they're headed, they want it resolved because they want to be able to move on. So are we going to see faster resolution here? There'll certainly be... Um, a faster resolution of cases arising from the greater efficiency that we get out of the courts as a consequence of these changes. But we shouldn't take that in isolation. The Morrison government has also supported other tools and other processes that can help people get to a resolution faster. We've invested in mediation to help people reach a, um, I guess, a negotiated or a discussed resolution of um, their way forward without having to go to court. We've also invested mm -hmm. in what's called Amica, which is an online tool that allows people who think they can sort this out in a relatively amicable, amicable way to do it basically online and 
make a plan for moving forward in relation to property division and the management of children in a way that can be registered with the court without ever having to go near one. So we're pro providing a whole lot of different tools that can help people get a better experience from this hard time of life. All right, I think it's uh, overdue. Congratulations on you. Uh, last week, was it, that you took this through the Senate? It might have been finished off this week, but uh, congratulations. Well done on that. I've got to ask you, you're a Queenslander. Thanks so much. I guess it's... Oh. <laughs> no, no, please, please. Um, I'm, I want to oh, ask sorry. you about I was this just going to say, it's, important, it's important to acknowledge that... Oh, sure, sure. No, please, Senator. I was just going to say, it's just the first step. Um, we all acknowledge there's more that has to be done in the family law system, um, that there are plenty of other improvements that can be made, but at least now we have a good foundation on which to do it and we're not pouring good resources after bad. We're going to be spending it wisely to get the best results for people. And I apologise for speaking over you. No, 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 no. It's the delay into Brisbane that we don't have in other, in other yes. markets that always catches me out. Um, I've got to ask you about this case in relation to this Sri Lankan family that were living for some time in Villa mm. Wheeler. The full court and federal court upheld an earlier ruling that the youngest daughter of this family, they're currently in immigration on Christmas Island, was denied procedural fairness in her bid to apply for an Australian visa. The ruling follows these repeated attempts from the government, your government, to deport the family. The mother and the father are both classified as unlawful maritime arrivals. If I remember rightly, they came uh, on separate boats and got together in Australia. Now, because they came on boats, that bars them from applying for a visa. The government has tried uh, to deport them a number of times and they have gone to the courts and failed you know, time and time again since 2013. It, it's a complicated case, I know, but I, I also know people are watching it really closely. Take us through where mm. this is up to now. So the decision we've had this week doesn't really change much in the big picture because it really is simply procedural and it means that um, one procedural step will be repeated. Its consequence is to string the case out and delay the point at which they would be deported. What's important to remember here is why we have the rule that says people who arrive Australia illegally, um, illegal maritime arrivals, people who arrive on boats, the reason why we can't ever let them settle in Australia is because of the message it sends to people smugglers. It says that their business model can reopen. It says that they can go to market and offer to vulnerable people for enormous fees the promise that if they jump on a dangerous leaky boat using all their savings, they will get to stay in Australia. It's very important that we don't give them any hook by which they can sell that message. Um, that is not cruel, that is humane. And so while it's easy to feel sympathetic for this family because they are, um, it seems, you know, quite appreciated by the community of Biloela, there's a bigger picture of the consequence of this policy. And so in circumstances where um, both of the adults involved in the relationship um, were uh, the subject of having it made very clear to them they would never be allowed to settle in Australia if they were an illegal maritime arrival, and they were instructed very clearly that having children in Australia wouldn't change that position, again, because we need to make sure that we're very clear about how um, we treat these cases and very consistent, then to do anything but maintain the position that is applied in every other case would be to invite more heartache on the seas. You're spot on, and uh, I have to say, having lived through those years, the Rudd Gillard years of those thousands and thousands of arrivals, 50,000, we never want to be back there again. Senator Amanda Stoker, thanks for your time.